Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Rob with Brain Buffet and I have a glow forge and what I'm trying to do is just kind of uh, create just a quick tutorial honestly for myself. Uh, I've used it fairly regularly so when I first got it but I've just been busy and traveling a lot lately and I'm just trying to get back into it a little bit and so I thought that it would be cool to make a kind of logo for you guys, a tutorial. And what I'm hoping to do is I've got some leather and I'm hoping to cut out around this red line so that will be the shape of basically making like a patch. And then this part where you see gray is going to be engraved. So uh, here's the setting that I have. And I know now that what I need to do is save it as an SVG. So I'm going to go here to save as. I'm going to make it an SVG. I'll just throw it on the desktop to play with it until I know I got it right. It's a habit that I have that I kind of like. And so here's the settings where I feel like there is something that I need. I'm pretty positive that this needed to be at embed and not link. I can't remember if I've upgraded or changed anything. I'm pretty positive that this needed to be on embedded. Decimal places is fine. Well, let's try this and see what happens. So I'm going to just export this to the desktop and now here in my browser, I am going to try and upload it and see what happens. So generally the way that it has worked, yeah. Okay, so this is good. This is exactly what I needed. So what I've noticed with the Glowforge is it doesn't really matter too much what colors or settings or whatever you use. What it does is all of the elements that have a single setting, it could be blue with a one point line or blue with a 30 point line with fill or no fill doesn't matter as long as that set of elements has the exact same visual appearance then it will create its own layer so what i did here was i just had those objects that are gray you can see here this is just a gray fill with no stroke and then i've got this little thin red outline that i set up basically to show me where it's going to cut okay so now what I need to do is I go in here It's thick natural leather and look it's already it kind of figured it out already here I want this to engrave and this to cut so what that should give me is this object where you know pink basically now is going to be engraved and red is going to be cut that's basically what I want. So one of the things that I find is a challenge with the Glowforge, you know, it's not really like a size specific thing. Like how do I tell it I want this object? To, oh, there's my inches right there. Okay, so question answered. I sort of wish that there was a properties bar where it would show me when I select an object or a group in this case, that this is one, two, basically three inches, basically a little bit over three inches. Let me grab a ruler. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why it's important to know how to read a ruler. Okay, so I'm looking at my ruler here, three inches. I'm trying to make a patch basically for a backpack. I think three inches is gonna do it. Uh, my style is my style is kind of understated. So I generally like logos and everything really small. Yeah, I think a three inch circle is gonna be really great. It's kind of a large backpack. And I'm just hoping to make a leather patch, basically, which is the, you know, obviously the Brain Buffet logo here that I can just glue onto the front of the backpack. I call my make a patch here, basically, out of this scrap leather that I got from the craft store. So, yeah, it's looking actually great. Uh, so now what I need to do is load it into the Glowforge, and I'll show you that in just a second. So you can see that I've loaded the... Uh, the leather in here and the glow forge the way it works is just super visually oriented and um, there's it's not like a precise measurement type device which actually I, I am not a huge fan of even though I tend to be a visual kind of person when I work with things once I get into something like this I feel like I should be working very precisely but then again with this scrap piece of leather 
uh, it would be really difficult to kind of line it up and account for all of these changes. I'd have to sort of guess things or, you know, just kind of estimate how far I needed it to be in. But uh, with all that being said, anyway, uh, this, I believe, is going to work for me. And I'm going to try giving it a print and see what happens. I can hear it cranking up over there. Okay, so now is where it kind of rolls into its thing and it gives me sort of a preview here of what it's going to look like. So, and it says that it's ready, so I will now uh, go ahead and print the print the item by pushing the big button on the front and I'll let you know what it looks like in the end. Okay, so just to kind of really quick show you kind of what it looks like, that's the cool backpack. So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, I think that's looking pretty good. So, you know, it's a little messy, the glue around the outside, just because I'm not good at that kind of thing, really. I don't know how I could have solved that. Um, I also am just not positive that this glue is even going to work a long time, although it's been pretty good with other things where I've glued um, leather to plastic. It's held up okay. So what I'm going to do is just put a clamp on it, like uh, you'll see in the image here in a second, and um, let it sit for a day or two. And then when I take it off, if it's going to hold, it'll hold. So, yeah, that's it. Kind of a cool way to personalize a backpack if you've got a laser engraver and you know how to use uh, Adobe software. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and it was a cool idea for you. All right, talk to you later. Bye.